வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் இண்டிகேஷன்ஸ் ஃபார் த ஓப்பன் ரிடக்ஷன் ஆஃப் மெட்டகாப்பல் ஷாஃப்ட் ஃப்ராக்சர்ஸ் மெட்டகாப்பல் ஷாஃப்ட் ஃப்ராக்சர்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ஃபிங்கர்ஸ் ஆர் குவைட் காமன் இன் திஸ் மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் வீடியோ வி ஷல் சி த இண்டிகேஷன்ஸ் ஃபார் ஓப்பன் ரிடக்ஷன் ஆஃப் மெட்டகாப்பல் ஷாஃப்ட் ஃப்ராக்சர்ஸ் the indications for open reduction are the following open fractures especially if associated with bone loss contamination or soft tissue injury are prime indications for open reduction if there are multiple metacarpal fractures open reduction is indicated since the stabilizing effect of adjacent metacarpals is lost and close reduction will not be effective it is easier to manage the wound the associated soft tissue injuries and the metacarpal shaft fractures by open reduction if an attempt has been made to do a close reduction of a metacarpal shaft fracture but it proves irreducible it is an indication for open reduction similarly unstable fractures that is fractures of the border metacarpals or marginal metacarpals are indications for open reduction even the slightest amount of rotational malalignment is an indication for open reduction especially in transverse fractures spiral and oblique fractures apparent shortening of the finger due to the metacarpal shaft fracture can be accepted up to 5 mm beyond that it is an indication for open reduction dorsal angulation is a fairly constant finding in metacarpal shaft fractures though about 30 to 40 degrees of angulation can be accepted in the fourth and fifth metacarpal shaft fractures only 10 to 20 degrees of angulation can be accepted in the second and third metacarpal shaft fractures but even in these acceptable levels there are some effects that may warrant open reduction sometimes the metacarpal head may be prominent in the palm causing pain on grasp because of the angulation there may be a compensatory hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint and a secondary pseudoclaw deformity with digital extension may be present and if the metacarpal shortening due to the angulation is great enough the intrinsic muscles may be unable to accommodate so they are weakened finally the dorsal prominence may be aesthetically displeasing as it may cause a hump on the dorsum of the hand the method of open reduction would entail the following points to access the fracture a longitudinal incision is made on the dorsum of the hand on one side of the extensor tendon overlying the involved metacarpal if all four metacarpals require reduction two longitudinal incisions are used one between the fourth and fifth metacarpals and one between the second and third metacarpals After making the incision while approaching the fracture care must be taken to preserve the cutaneous nerves and the parotidium surrounding the extensor tendons there may be a need to divide one of the juncturae tendinum for fracture visualization and this should be repaired after the fixation is over the fracture ends are then exposed and the fracture hematoma is removed reduction can be achieved by longitudinal traction the next step is by what technique to fix this reduced fracture there are different techniques available for fixation after open reduction k wire fixation composite or tension band wiring circlage wiring and interosseous wiring interfragmentary screw fixation and finally plate and screw fixation about deciding which of these techniques is to be used A study in 2001 stated that rigid fixation is usually unnecessary however fixation must be sufficiently stable to maintain reduction and allow early rehabilitation and the choice of implant is dictated by the fracture configuration clinical situation and the experience of the surgeon before we go forward from here we need to know one important thing the complication of non operative management of metacarpal shaft fractures is deformity whereas the complications of inappropriate or improperly done operative management are 
deformity and stiffness.